So there are many moving parts into um, integrating the drone together, including motor control, video streaming with OpenCV, and writing the mapping application and so on. So one of the requirements was to integrate the BME688, which has the um, I2C and SPI. Um, similar to the BMG 288 if you're familiar with the temperature sensor, uh, which um, um, can, it's a little bit different from um, that. The only thing is the customizable heat plate that allows you to detect multiple or various like gas composition, um, which I could use for environmental sensing. Um, I knew I was like, the story, long story short is that I, was testing the sensor with the Raspberry Pi Pickle. Um, the motivation was instead of having to write a kernel driver or finding a way to talk to the Pickle in directly to get the telemetry, why not put it on the flight controller? So thankfully, Bosch has a very well-defined C API, which is the reason why I could get it to work so quickly you look at the C functions, they all expect an argument pointer to a struct device or like an instant, which encapsulate all the ELOMs, um, a generic pointer, an interface pointer, function pointers, and stuff like that. So I know that could potentially be a fit for porting it over on C++ on the system. Then I needed to define a interface or a pure virtual um, class in C++. We share the common implementation between I squared C and SPY. Um, these are like init function, read and write for data transaction, device ID and device address and stuff like that. But you might wonder, okay, I have a SPY device. How could I? do a read and write without a transmit. And it turns out that the NutX driver class has the abstraction for uh, handling the transaction with a transfer call. So this basically um, is the C++ hall where it abstract the underlying transaction at bit levels. So I don't need to worry about that as much. So here I inherit the i squared c peripheral class with the device interface I defined earlier. Um, I then implement the two transport call. Um, in this case, for I2C, the TX would be writing the first byte as the register address, followed by the data. And then for VC, those would be null and with a size of zero. For VC, you know, I would do something similar, give it the device address, the size, the buffer for reading, and so on. On the spy side, the first byte would be the address and the instruction, depending on how you interpret the sensor driver um, to differentiate the um, read and write call. So we now create a device class by inheriting the template of the bus driver of the NutX um, OS, which also inherit from both classes, which is the schedule work item class and the bus in iterator instance. The schedule work item has dependencies on the, it's basically a PX4 work queue. Um, so that would select either one of the inter interface to initialize. And so um, if that all goes well, you allocate the device instance class, which we run the in init routine from there. So that also implies that the module device method like a read, write, or delay functions that I declared earlier need to be written generically um, as they get assigned back to the C structure um, that has all the pointers I mentioned from the beginning. Um, the init call, which I invoke all the device startup routines from the C API um, before scheduling and adding the um, work item to the queue. So now we have a device sensor module. Let's go over a few tips on how to bootstrap the sensor module. You could use a help from the Linux terminal from QGround control. Um, first, you want to make sure the module is enabled from manual config, or you can set that 
enabled by default. Um, the module start command basically add an I squared C or spy instance to the work queue. Start will remove deleted from the work queue and checks would basically as it implies to see if the instance is running. You could start the module at boot up with the RLC script under the target init directory. And if for some reason the instantiation fail, you could check um, the device bus address using the I squared C detect, or you could simply restart the, um, the module with a slower speed and see if that helps. So I then add a message topic for URLB. In this case, would be sensor gas because it's a sensor de uh, gas device. The message definition is automatically generated as a C struct. So within my scheduler implementation, I would add two state in which one pulls data and the other would get the data and publish it at two hertz. Now that you have a topic, you could check the status, including subscribers, the queue number, the size, and the topic path. You could inspect the message data using the topic listener command as well. Um, so here we have it, we have the sensor telemetry. But you might ask like, why bother, you know, if I mount a sensor that is pretty much far away from the controller, you will be noisy for I squared C and SPY anyways, right? A more standard solution would be to getting telemetry over a CAN node or UAV CAN device. Um, but overall, this might worth a shot if the vendor sensor API is like well written, because um, you might have to integrate that uh, on, a, at, on a different MCU anyways. Um, so now you have a module running, which means that you can profile within your PX4 middleware um, you can, you have better control of your data sampling rate and the priority. Alternatively, you can route um, your OLB message to Mavlink or LTSP um, over serial for your companion computer to interpret it and subscribe to the topic. And so he, he is like, here's how you implement your sensor device with uh, natively on board. Uh, for more info, you can check out the links that I have here um, and for the project putting the sensor telemetry to use. Last but not least, I want to thank um, Linux and Junko Foundation for allowing me the opportunity to speak here today. And I hope, I hope that you learned something and found something useful. <laughs> thank you. Any questions? Concerns? Would you be okay if some of this material moved into export docs as a tutorial? Yeah. Can you repeat the question so we can record it? So the question was can you include that on uh, PX4? Um, I assume the px4.org uh, to basically add more documentation, yes. which I could, happy to do that. And this is not on PL, which potentially I want it to be as well, so. Yes. Yes, <laughs> so uh, I noticed us in Nudex, they've also implemented quite a quite a number of uh, sensors depending on uh, which board you use. Um, is there an advantage of implementing it directly in NUDX versus PS4? Actually, I'm not sure, but that depends on your sensor target. Um, um, in this case, on the FMUK, um, there are only basically one external for I squared C, and then the SPI is pretty much external. Um, the I squared C is shared with the, um, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, is uh, shared with NFC. So it really depends on your target. Yeah. 